As many of us may know, especially the Christians among our viewers, there are generally 66 books in the Bible which are divided into the 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. Some of us might not know many books were excluded for several reasons, and one of the most significant books that was excluded is the Book of Enoch, a chronicle of apocalyptic events that seems to be the true reason for the Great Flood that washed away every living thing on Earth, while Noah, his family, and a reservoir of animals could be gathered floating on the ark for forty days and forty nights. So what could have been in the 107 chapters of this ancient Hebrew apocalyptic text that saw it excluded from most religious texts such as the current Bible and the Hebrew Septuagint and the Torah despite being acknowledged as scripture by several scholars from the past? In fact, only the Ethiopian and the Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedu churches regard the apocalyptic text as scripture. Sit back as we spell out the dark tales of fallen angels and ravenous giants that drew the wrath of God to the extent that he demanded that the earth needed to restart with a blank slate. These are the dark tales of the Book of Enoch. First off, you must know that the Book of Enoch dates back to a time before even the birth of Jesus Christ. A few believe some parts were written as far back as the 2nd century BC, and the only copy of the pseudepigraphical works is an Ethiopic translation of a Greek version which was in turn translated from the original Hebrew language or the ancient language of Aramaic, a tongue that most of us that have seen the Passion of the Christ movie might be familiar with. Made up of over 107 chapters, the apocalyptic texts were divided into five chapters which are the Book of Watchers, the Similitudes of Enoch, the Astronomical Book, the Book of Dreams, and the Epistle of Enoch. While the apocryphal books have been shrouded in mystery for many millennia to many of us, details of the tales within the first and last chapters have seeped into the knowledge of many, even the Christians of the past. One of the first things that people will know from the Book of Enoch, although some details can also be found in the Book of Genesis, is that Enoch was a legendary figure of the Hebrew and Judeo-Christian faith. Distinguished from Enoch, one of the sons of Cain, the Enoch of the Book of Enoch was the seventh out of the ten patriarchs. He was the direct descendant of Adam, having been his great-great-great-great-grandson through Seth. He was also the son of Jared, who lived up to 962 years. At the age of 65, he begat a son we might all know as Methuselah, a legendary figure of the Bible that lived up to the incredible age of 696 years, thereby being the oldest man that ever lived, according to the religious texts. And as if that wasn't enough, he was also the great-grandfather of Noah, the man who oversaw the construction of the ark and the continuity of all life on earth as he rode the massive waves of water that washed away all other beings on earth while aboard the ark, according to God's instructions. What's interesting about this link to Noah and the massive floods is that the Book of Enoch seems to give a more expansive reason for the floods that washed away man and their sinful nature after the fall of Adam and Eve and their eviction from the Garden of Eden. The Book of Enoch details the punishment that the Watchers would face following the acts that they committed toward the corruption of mankind. At the time, the Watchers were assigned to watch over the ever-flourishing growth of mankind and their industries while never intervening in their activities. At the same time, mankind was barely sinful. The corruption occurred when these Watchers, all two hundred of them who were revered to as the creatures of heaven, became enamored with human women and were soon unable to curb the urge to know them in a sexual nature. Despite their instructions from God, Sam Jaza, the leader of the Watchers, led his angels, keeping in mind of the fact that he solely would face the wrath of God by taking mortal women as wives. This evil act would lead to dire consequences indeed as the other angels bound themselves to Sam Jaza's direction and mate with these mortal women. Not only did the Watchers teach their mates and other women about evils like magic, casting charms, and cutting off roots which God had forbidden man to know as this might have resulted in mankind's knowledge of sorcery and witchcraft as well as weaponry and warfare, the malignant union between the angels and the women they took as wives were the birth of the Nephilim, a giant hybrid of angels and human who developed into savage, ravenous monsters that consumed everything in their path. 
This means that after these savage beasts consumed all the birds and livestock that have been tended to by men, these monsters descended upon men as well, and even after they were done feasting on man, they started to cannibalize themselves as they were unable to curb their unhinged consumption of everything in their path. Inside of this, the Watchers, now deemed as the lawless ones, failed to intervene in the actions of their savage and uncontrollable offsprings, perhaps because the Nephilim might have been as powerful as their angelic fathers. Unsurprisingly, what was left of mankind got on their knees and begged God for his intervention. Eventually, God had to step in to end the corruption of mankind. Enoch himself was used by God as a messenger to the Watchers, now known as the Fallen Angels. In the book, he is witnessed as he let Semjazer and his cohorts know that they shall have no peace and there shall be no mercy for their corruptive actions which were contrary to their original purpose, and no mercy was shown indeed as God set his archangels upon them. Archangels Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael descended upon the ne'er-do-well watchers and their giant and unruly spawn unto whom they executed God's rage and judgment. Before long, the Watchers were slain. Furthermore, while this was going on, the Archangel Uriel was sent by God to Noah, who was alive at the time, and deemed to be among the purest of men left, if not the purest, to take cover while the will of God was inflicted upon those who defiled the earth. Samjaza, along with the other two hundred and their unholy offspring, were bound in the darkness and destroyed. This serves as a prelude towards Noah's great feat of building the ark while God washes away the corruption that the Watchers brought upon the earth. After all, the mortals hadn't been totally blameless during the corruption as they took the teachings of the Watchers. Nonetheless, the Book of Enoch also teaches of the stars, the moon, astronomy, and the universe, and details of the great flood that would wash away the sins of the earth, the challenges, and the fate of both the wicked and the righteous alike, with the concluding chapters covering the fate of the world following the great flood and the rejuvenation of the world up until the Messiah makes his way to the world. Avinoch himself, having acted as an intermediary between the Lord God and the dissident angels and their reprobate spawn, he died at the age of 365. Or rather, as the texts and legend have told us, the great scribe and judge was said to walk with God, a phrase that signifies that unlike his father and his father's father long before him and most of mankind after him, he never really died but ascended into heaven. The tales of the Book of Enoch may not have been seen fit to be added as one of the 66 books of the Bible, but the fantastic tales can be said to give more light as to the events that occurred in the beginning of time, according to the Judeo-Christian Chronicles. In conclusion, the Book of Enoch is stuff of fantasy. While Jesus and his apostles never referred to it and still remain absent in most books of the Bible, the tale of fallen angels and vicious giants does give some more exposition to the apocalyptic flood of the Old Testament. Perhaps the Book of Enoch should be introduced by more churches. What do you think? As the video has come to an end, please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to know more about the Fallen Angels, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll be notified about our next videos. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of that.